Gotta love those inflammatory words. Toxic, like Britney Spears' hit song. But those aren't my words, or even Britney's. They're actually the words of the researchers. It turns out that as your kidney function worsens, a previously rare toxic protein begins to present itself in your arteries, leading to some pretty devastating consequences. The protein is progerin, and it's actually a cautionary tale for why keeping your kidney health, an overlooked organ, although nephrologists would beg to differ, intact is critical to avoiding blood vessel damage. The reality is progerin has been known about for some time, but it's mainly been attributed to people with hutchinson gilford progera syndrome, which is a rare genetic disorder. Disorder. But now we're learning that it is far more relevant to people like you and me, people with otherwise genetically healthy kidneys, as progerin can build up and cause havoc in our arteries. Typically, your kidneys are like a filtration plant, like for your water in your town, but they filter your blood and remove, I'm going to say it again, toxic molecules called uremic toxins. These uh, come in many shapes and sizes that we don't need to get into. Just know that your kidneys remove uremic toxins from your blood and dispose of it in your urine. Unfortunately, as your kidney health declines, which we'll get into some ways of easily checking that later, there's a rise in the protein progerin. Progerin arises due to the damage of these uremic toxins caused on the genes within our cells, in this case, cells of the arteries, that ultimately causes a mutation, leading to the production of progerin. So, in this study, the researchers discovered in people, as seen here, that people with bad kidneys, so CKD there, have greater progerin levels compared to people with healthy kidneys the remaining condition. If the dots go up, that means that there's more progerin. Critically, these people do not have this inherent Hutchinson-Gilford syndrome. These are people, like I said before, like you and me, that have poor kidney health, independent of their genetics. Okay, but how exactly does this toxic progerin gunk up or build up in our arteries? Well, you know how you have to have blood pressure or you die? If you've never thought about it before, now you can. Your blood is in a closed system, a system of dynamic, biologically active pipes. If you zoom into those pipes, there's a multiple types of cells and non-cell architecture that control your blood pressure by squeezing or relaxing the blood vessels. So, in short, these arterial cells control your blood pressure. Now, since we know that progerin is spontaneously produced due to this mutation caused by the toxins not flushed out by the damaged kidneys, what are the consequences of progerin in these arterial cells? Well, surprisingly, the researchers did a cell proliferation assay. Essentially, they wanted to test the growth and division of arterial cells. Now, what would you expect to happen? Cells exposed to this toxic protein are going to grow more or less? If you said less, you are, I think counterintuitively, wrong. The researchers actually indicated that these cells have more growth markers, so the arterial cells burdened with progerin tend to multiply. And if you think about it, that may be worse, considering that you're essentially growing unhealthy cells faster than you're growing healthy arterial cells. So imagine that happens over time as there's more dysfunctional cells than functional cells in your arteries. Now, look, maybe when you were a kid, you were so frustrated with life or your parents that you declared that you were running away from home. Well, progerin infected arterial cells don't just threaten it, they do it. The researchers examined slices of arteries here, and the red outline is the border of the artery, and the white specks are the specific artery cells that we're concerned with, called smooth muscle cells, the ones that directly control blood pressure. The top image is the normal artery, so you can see that the cells remain inside the red border, and the bottom image is the cells with progerin toxicity. <laughs> they said, screw you, dad, I'm leaving. <laughs> a mass exodus from their designated position. So, think about that for a moment. If your arterial cells leave their post, what does that do for the integrity of your arteries? Nothing good, I can tell you that much. In fact, what replaces them might be worse. Because if we look at another image of what the arteries look like, all I need you to notice is the lighter coloring on the right image, as well as the lack of organized structure compared to the left image, which is an image of healthy artery. That discoloration and the lack of structure is due to what happens when space needs to be filled 
where arterial cells used to be located, but they've left their post, remember? That space is filled with fibrous tissue. Essentially, collagen gets deposited to maintain the structure as well as possible. Now, remember when I asked you if you thought uh, there might be fewer of the arterial cells if progerin accumulates? Well, I guess you were kind of right. And in fact, I'll go ahead and tell you that the smooth muscle cells, the arterial cells, also have been dying from the stress. I don't mean that like an exam coming up and you're like, I'm dying, but actually dying from the progerin accumulation. It really is almost like an infection. So we now see this chain of events. Poor kidney health leads to an accumulation of this uremic toxins in the blood that particularly physically damage the genes of the arterial cells, with one in particular that causes a sudden unwanted production of a toxic protein, progerin. As progerin levels rise in the arterial cells, the cells begin to malfunction, dividing more, leaving their posts in the artery wall and dying. That's the sum of it. But where there are problems, there are also solutions. Hey, there are solutions, right? Did we not, did we not know, they're gonna have my head. Okay, I've been informed uh, by my producer that we do, in fact, have solutions. Hey, and if you're ever dissatisfied with the level of detail here, I actually go over much more on how progerin affects your body, some of the other strange things that your artery cells do, an age effect, and even a potent molecule that may help clear progerin from the cells coming from another study. That's all in my full analysis, which is included for the Physionic Insiders. Plus, all these perks, if you're looking for a deeper dive, that's the place to be. We can even discuss it in one of my live sessions that I regularly do, if you are so inclined. Anyway, up to you, link to join the insiders in the description. So, the solutions center around the beginning of this cascade, the kidney. As we saw, people with healthy kidneys do not have this association to increase progerin. And I will say, as we age, progerin levels may rise. Anyway, the point being, the first step is to test your kidney health, which you can rudimentarily do using your usual blood tests. So using metrics like serum creatinine, uh, EGFR, and blood urea nitrogen. Any one of those or a combination of those. However, I should point out that if you supplement with creatine or you work out a lot, some of these measures can report back artificially poor results. So in that case, getting a cystatin C test can be a better marker, although you may have to pay extra or ask for it. Then there are some more burdensome tests like urinalysis and others, but those I mentioned before are a great start. So then how do we maintain healthy kidneys? Well, there's plenty of things that you can do actually. I'll list a few here. For one, high blood sugar can create detrimental molecules called AGEs, which impair kidney function. So focusing on reducing blood sugar can make a significant difference. So low carb diets, Mediterranean diets are just a few ways to do that. That, in addition to exercise, surprisingly also directly benefits the kidney function along with reducing blood sugar levels. A second thing is to avoid nephrotoxins. These are molecules that you're exposed to that directly harm your kidneys. So one perfect example is the overconsumption of certain drugs like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. In the short term, it's likely not a big issue, but being dependent on them can definitely be detrimental. A third thing is to reduce your blood pressure as high blood pressure can harm your kidneys, not to mention the harm to your arteries that are already struggling. Again, nutrition and exercise have potent effects on your blood pressure. In fact, particular exercises have a tremendous effect, and I'll speak on that more in a minute. So, everything considered, keeping your kidneys healthy keeps your arterial cells from being exposed to undue DNA damage, resulting in the production of the toxic protein progerin, which causes cell dysfunction and death in the artery. We can avoid that from ever happening by one, testing our kidney function, and two, focusing on prevention and re reversal of kidney harm, like keeping your blood sugar normal, avoiding nephrotoxins, like overconsuming pain relief drugs. And a big one is reducing your blood pressure. And it's on that last one that we can actually perform a simple one minute exercise that has tremendous long lasting blood pressure lowering effects. I detail more on the science of how to do it right here. Thanks for tuning in. 
progerin be gone.